Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you tonight. Turn and shake hands with at least three people and say, thank God for the word. And then you can be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the name. We bless the name of Jesus. Praise God. We are, <laughs> we are going to get into some things tonight. I didn't tell you, I didn't think seven o'clock was ever going to get here. <laughs> well, we could get over here and, and get into action. Glory to God. Let's open our Bibles once again this evening to Ephesians chapter two, please. Now we were talking about this. Well, I spoke about it both yesterday evening and this morning. My, we had a session this morning was just marvelous. The Lord really met us. The long lasting question. Why were there so many miracles in the first covenant, so many miracles right on into the second covenant, right on into the book of Acts. And you see it in other lands in Africa, you see it in other countries, but very limited amount, nowhere near what it should be in the Western cultures. And it's not because people don't love God. It is, however, clearly stated in the second chapter of the book of Ephesians, verse 11, wherefore remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. At that time, there it is. At that time, you were without Christ. Now, what does that mean? That means you were without the anointed. You were without the, without the anointing. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from both covenants without hope and without God in the world. Now you can be a born again, Holy Ghost, baptized, tongue talking, healing, believing, miracle believing Christian and have little to no knowledge of at all all about what it, what covenants really mean. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Being a stranger to the covenants of promise. Now, when you get among covenant people that are raised in covenant culture, yeah. it's a totally different story because of the, the ingrained knowledge of the absolute sacredness and power of a covenant relationship. Amen. Amen. So tonight, <laughs> I, I believe, I, well, I know the Lord's going to help us tonight. We're going to see some things and answer a lot of questions. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I want to uh, go back over some things that we talked about last night. And I, I'm going to be reading from uh, Dr. E.W. Kenyon's book, The Blood Covenant. And uh, I've studied this little book for years. And some of you that maybe didn't hear my, what I said last night about it. I, when I first got my hands on that book, uh, back in the 80s, 
when Braniff Airlines had a, had a shuttle service between uh, Fort Worth and Houston, and it, it went uh, every hour and on the half hour, it went, and you know, just a few minute ride. But back in those days, you know, the security wasn't all that much. You just, you just bought the ticket at the gate, right. got on the thing. And very few people got up in the front seat because there weren't any windows up there. Well, that's where I wanted to be. I didn't want to talk to them. They didn't want to look out the window. And um, our airplane was, was in the shop for maintenance. And so somebody had given me this, this blood cover. Back then it was a smaller book and it was, just, and it was all red. And... Uh, I, somebody had given it to me and I just stuck it in my pocket. So I got that little book out and I started reading it. Oh my goodness. Now, my being Native American uh, in my background on my, my mother's side, I'll tell you this thing really talking to me. I, when I was a little boy, I wanted to be, I wanted a blood brother really bad because <laughs> I was an only child. My mother couldn't have any more children and, and I wanted a brother and the only way I was going to get one was, <laughs> I thought when I was little, I was going to get me a blood brother. You know? <laughs> Amen. So, and the bottom line of this whole thing is Jesus Christ of Nazareth is your and my blood brother in every sense of the word. Amen. And it hit me, I'm telling you. And <laughs> they, that front book had, had carpet on it because everybody stuck their feet up there. I was the only one up there. And I'm reading this little book. And, and the booze lady came up there with the cart, you know. And she came up there and she said, would you like, oh, no, you've had too much already. <laughs> she did that and turned around. I guess, I don't know, Tom, I guess my eyes were glazed over. I was, I was a bit drunk, if you really want to know the truth. Amen. Amen. They get drunk on their spirit. I get drunk on mine. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> now, look at that again. Strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Being a stranger to the covenant culture, which the Western world is, a covenant to the Western world is just something you write down on paper, you know, it's, and in the neighborhood they don't let you paint your house a funny color. Yeah. This thing is blood. Yeah. Yeah. This is something you don't break. Amen. 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 Now, before we get any further, let me tell you this. The new covenant cannot be broken. The second thing I'm going to tell you, don't get all up there and say, well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm going to get me a blood brother. I, I'm, I'm going to mix blood. Don't you dare start messing with stuff like that. You'll get a hold of something you wish you never got into in your life. You already have a blood covenant. You don't need to be mixing blood with anybody. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. The new covenant is between the almighty God and the man, Jesus. Now we can get out of fellowship with it, but we can't break it. That's the reason it doesn't have a curse on it. Hallelujah. The Father and the Son are not, a, they, they can't break it. Wouldn't if they could. Amen. 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 
God. A covenant of blood. Hallelujah. Between yeah. the Almighty God Hallelujah. and a born again Holy Ghost baptized. Yes, glorified immortal man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's still a man. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's a man tonight in the Godhead. Hallelujah. A man. A human man. I'll tell you, we're well represented. Glory to God. And we need to really get used to that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, there's so much ramification here. Now, he's also the high priest of the covenant. Thank you, Lord. Now, I, I want to go back to the basics. And, and again, I'm going to be talking from uh, Dr. Kenyon's book. The root word for covenant in the Hebrew language is to cut. I'm quoting Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Kenyon. Suggesting an incision where blood flows. That's the word for covenant. Now, the reasons for cutting the covenant, that's the proper terminology. Not entering a covenant, cutting a covenant. If a strong tribe lives by the side of a weaker tribe, then there's danger of the weaker tribe being destroyed. The weaker tribe will seek to cut the covenant with a stronger tribe that they may be preserved. Second, two businessmen entering into a partnership might cut the covenant to ensure that neither would take advantage of the other. Third, if two men loved each other devotedly as David and Jonathan, they would cut the covenant for that love's sake. The method, two men wish to cut the covenant. They come together with their friends and a priest First, they exchange gifts. By this exchange of gifts, they indicate that all that one has, the other owns if necessary. After the exchange of gifts, they bring a cup of wine. The priest makes an incision in the arm of one man and the blood drips into the wine. An incision is made in the other man's arm and his blood drips into the same cup. Then the wine is stirred, bloods are mixed, the cup is handed to one man, he drinks part of it, and hands it to the other man, he drinks the rest of it. And when they have drunk it, oft times they will put their wrists together so that their blood mingle, and they'll touch their tongues to each other's wounds. There's another practice there where they would take gunpowder and, and rub it into that incision so that it would make a black mark forever. And you were marked, and people know you're in covenant. And they do not know with whom. So it would probably be a good idea to let you alone. Because they're picking on you, they're picking on somebody else, and they don't know who it happened to be. And there's certain folks you don't ever want to pick on. That's right. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. And King David was one of them. Yes, Glory to God. Now, that's, that's the basic of it. Now then, this is the area to which I want to go this evening. Where did all this come from? Where did it start? Well, of course, the covenant between God and Abram, becoming Abraham, was long, long, long ago. And the influence of that covenant was scattered throughout the earth. But that's not the very beginning of it. If you'll 
And this, this, is such, this is such vital information. Let's go to the book of Genesis, please. That's pretty well at the front, isn't it? <laughs> My goodness, Myrtle is going to preach the whole thing tonight. He's starting at the front of the book. In Genesis... And we will we will look here yeah Thank you, Lord. In the uh, third chapter, please, the seventh verse. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made them aprons, or the cross-reference says, things to gird about. Now, look at the 21st verse. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them? This is the first record of blood being exposed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is before the fight between Cain and Abel. Yes, sir. This is the very beginning. It wasn't any Cain and Abel yet. But an animal shed blood. Yes, sir. I mean, if you're really covenant minded, you, that's the first place you have to go. Amen. Because you have to understand, they had no idea what they were doing. They were frightened, and, and, and they, they, it was the first attempt by man to meet his own needs without God. Yeah. And he sewed him a fig leaf suit. <laughs> what they know about sewing anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't you know the Lord said, oh, come on, boy. <laughs> Where'd you get that suit? <laughs> he knew exactly where it came from. The Lord God killed an animal. And the first provision covenant in blood was made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's go back to Dr. Kenyon's book. The uh, story... It's very interesting if you've never read it or studied it, it's, it's worthwhile. Of Dr. David Livingston, who was a Scottish missionary, presumed lost in Africa. And Sir Henry Stanley set out to find him. And, and this, they, they finally got together on the 10th of November in 1871. And at that time, the gospel had not been preached in Africa. Amen. Amen. And um, Livingston was the man that opened it up. And it's very, very interesting. Interesting. 
when Stanley was seeking Livingstone, he came in contact with a powerful equatorial tribe. They were very warlike. Stanley was not in condition to fight with them. Finally, his interpreter asked him why he didn't make a strong covenant with them. He asked what it meant and was told that it meant drinking each other's blood. Stanley revolted from such a rite, but conditions kept going worse until finally the young, his young interpreter asked him again why he didn't cut the covenant with the chieftain of the tribe. Stanley asked what the results of such a covenant would be, and the interpreter answered, everything the chieftain has will be yours if you need it. This appealed to Stanley, and he investigated. After several days of negotiations, they, they arrived at the covenant. First, there was a parley in which the chieftain questioned Stanley as to his motives and standing and his ability to keep the covenant. He wasn't going to enter that with just anybody. The next step was an exchange of gifts. The old chieftain wanted Stanley's new white goat. Stanley was in poor health, and the goat's milk was about all he could take for nourishment. So it was very hard for him to give, the, give, it, give this up, but the chieftain seemed to want nothing else. So finally he gave up the goat, and the old chieftain handed him his seven-foot copper-wound spear. This thing's seven feet long. Stanley thought he had been beaten. But now listen, he found that when, wherever he went in Africa with that spear, everybody bowed down to him. He was on equal rank with that king. Oh, that's all to start talking to you. You and I were nobody till we made Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives. And we became joint heirs. Whoa. Now see that right there. I mean, 99, 9 tenths percent of us, all born again people have no clue. They don't even believe that much of it. Yeah. Much less what we're delving into tonight. Yeah, right. In fact, they get pretty upset with you and me. Yeah. You know, we're the, uh, you know, the <laughs> name it, claim it, grab it, blab it group. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I named it, claimed it, blabbed it, yeah. grabbed it, and I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Now walk in it. It's mine. And because of my relationship with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my relationship with the Almighty God, healing and health and wealth belong to me. Everything that belonged to that king belonged to Stanley. Yes. Jesus didn't go to the cross and bear my sickness and disease so he could withhold it from me. That's right. Amen. And he surely didn't get it for himself. But by covenant, I'm a partaker of his blood. I'm a partaker of his name. I'm a partaker of his calling. His heavenly home is my heavenly home. And everything he got, I receive. Everything, I mean, all that he has is mine. And all that I have is his. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Even right down and including that glorified body. Bless God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. It belongs to you. Glory be to Jesus. Now then, as soon 
as the two young men had drunk each other's blood, a priest stepped out and pronounced the most awful curses Stanley had ever heard. Curses that were to come upon him if he broke the covenant. Yeah. Then Stanley's interpreter took his part and pronounced curses upon the old king, his wife, his children, his tribe, if they broke the covenant with Stanley. Amen. Amen. The covenant of blood in the underworld it was Many, 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 many years before anybody ever broke that covenant. Enough for law enforcement to ever get anywhere close to breaking up the black hand, the Cosa Nostra, the mafia. It never was broken in Europe. Now when it began, it didn't begin as a crime organization. They weren't against it. <laughs> but it was local help. The Don. You entered into covenant with the Don and the Don, whatever the Don had, it was, it was yours. But he would ask for a favor. And... Uh, with a smile. <laughs> just, just keep him smiling. Just keep him smiling. The curse a something would be burned in the palm of your hand. In most cases, the, the, the joker of a deck of cards, but not necessarily had to be that. Because in different locations, it was a different thing. But here was the curse. May you die of cancer of the throat if you ever divulge and break this covenant. And do you know they did? Check it out. That happened. The curse came to pass. Now, you know Jim Baker, and Jim Baker was just railroaded into prison. And thank God he got a full pardon because uh, one of the the most renowned Harvard professor, Professor uh, Derwitz. Dershowitz, thank you. That thing just stunk to him. And he didn't like it, and he kept digging into it. The judge or the prosecutor, neither one, will ever practice law again, and one of them went to prison. Wow. Now, most people didn't hear that part. Jim and I have been close for many, 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 many years. And uh, I went to see him. He was in Rochester in a minimum security unit there. And there was a mob boss in there. And, of course, I mean, Jim was petrified when he went in there. And he had not a clue what's going to happen to him. He just woke up and found himself in that mess. And, um, and I asked him about it. I said, Jim, what, what, uh, what, what, what happened when you first came in here? <laughs> he said, Kenneth, he, said the, 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 he told me the man's name. 
and he kept his crew around him all the time. And he came up, that the, some of the guys came and got Jim and brought him over there to him. He said, Jimmy boy, don't worry about a thing. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, my daughter, they watch you all the time. Wow. They love me. <laughs> they said, take care, Jimmy. Wow. <laughs> Nobody going to touch you. You think the Lord didn't do that? Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Nobody messed with Jimmy. <laughs> but now, isn't it amazing that when it comes to covenant, we know more about the mafia than, than we do the covenants of the Bible. But it is a mirror image on the dark side. Yeah. 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 Now, this is what Dr. Kenyon is referring to. And um, talking about going back to the original covenant. The original covenant. Referring, for the most part, to the covenant between God and Abraham and with his family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to the 27th chapter of Deuteronomy. We have studied the 28th and never did get it. Didn't get it. Tried to work around the fact that the Lord would send upon. Struggled with that. Trying to come up with God doesn't make people sick. And as we discussed this morning, don't ever forget yeah. God is love. That's right. This is a covenant of love. Amen. It's love based, love thought up, love organized, love worked out. But in order to get the impact of the 28th chapter, I got a glimpse of this a long time ago, and I'm sh ashamed to tell you I let it slip. But I'm back. Yeah. Glory to God. Ninth verse of the 27th chapter. You do understand that there were no chapter and verse numbers in this. Verse 9, Moses and the priests, the what? The priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel, this day that thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. This is covenant day. Oh, glory be to God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. And Moses charged the people the same day, saying, these shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people. When you are come over Jordan, Simeon, Levi, Judah, and Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin, these shall stand on Mount Ebal, the mountain on this side and the mountain on this side. 
to curse Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. Naphtali. Verse 1 of the 28th chapter. Standing on Mount Gerizim. It shall come to pass if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And the people said, Amen. Amen. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And the people said, Amen. Blessed shall you be in the city. Amen. Blessed shall you be in the field. Amen. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Amen. The fruit of your ground. Amen. The fruit of your cattle. Amen. The increase of your kind, the flocks of your sheep. Blessed shall be your basket and your store. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before your face. They come out against you one way and shall flee before you seven. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that you set your hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And the Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto, unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his people. And all, of, all the people said, Amen. Amen. And the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods in the fruit of your body and the fruit of your cattle and the fruit of your ground in the land which the Lord swear unto the fathers to give thee. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season to bless all the work of thine hand. And all shall, you shall lend to many nations and shall not borrow. The Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. You be above only and not be beneath if you hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Yeah. Now comes the shout from Mount Ebal. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words I have commanded thee this day, but, now this came from the other mountain. It shall come to pass if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. All these curses will come upon you and overtake you. And all the people said, Amen. Cursed shall you be in the city. Cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall be your basket. Cursed shall be your store. Cursed shall be the fruit. Can you see what's happening here? It's covenant day. The Lord will smite you with consumption, with a fever and inflammation, with extreme burning, and so forth, all the way down to that 61st verse. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them the Lord will bring upon you till you be destroyed, and you shall be left few in number. It's covenant day. The blessing of the covenant is being pronounced and the curse is being pronounced. Amen. Now remember, God's not telling these people he's going to kill them. Don't forget, he put in sacrifices so this didn't have to happen. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And in the first place, all you had to do was do what he said. But there's so much more taking place here. Amen. Remember this. Satan was the god of this world. And God's people 
had to be protected. They didn't know him. They didn't know who he was. And God's not about to give any kind of revelation of him. He would take the blame before he would reveal the devil because if he got revealed, they'd follow him. Now, there was insight into him. Amen. Amen. Did you notice Jesus found himself in the book of Isaiah? Yes, sir. And there's revelation of the operations of Satan in the book of Isaiah, yes, in the book of Ezekiel, yes, and so forth and so on. Amen. Are you following me so yes, far? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Glory. God. Glory. Praise the name of the... It's praising time. Oh, let's just praise Him. Now think about how Western-minded People ignorant of what I'm telling you and what the Lord is showing you and showing me tonight. Well, I, you know, I guess God put this on me. No, 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 no. We're in a different covenant. Woo -wee. Glory to God, hallelujah. We are in a different place and the devil's in a different place. Go with me to Hebrews. Now, you, 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 you must understand <laughs> that the book of Hebrews is the book of the covenant. There is so much explained here, particularly to people that had some understanding of covenant to start with. A lot of answers here. Talking about the blood of the everlasting covenant, which is the blood of Jesus. The blood of the Lamb. Praise God. Look in the second chapter of the book of Hebrews. Verse 9. We see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels. Satan is a fallen angel. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Taste represents the five physical senses. Now, we have come from the first covenant that carried a curse of death all the way over to the second covenant. Think about this. In the first covenant, you couldn't get born again. You were saved, but not born again. That didn't happen until Jesus was glorified and the first covenant saints moved over into the second covenant. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Preserved in paradise, yes. but not in heaven. Right. Now, You and I are new creatures. You 
nor can any born again human being taste it when you die. You can't smell it when you die. You can't feel it when you die. You can't see it when you die. And you can't hear it when you die. You won't know it. Glory. Hallelujah. Except. I feel good. <laughs> One of my very closest friends, in fact, he was my flight instructor uh, when I got my type rating in the Learjet back in, in many years, the second type rating that I, I received. And uh, uh, Captain Dale Black and he, um, when he was a, he was just a young man, he, he was, he had all of his ratings and he was coming up the line, new God, born again young man. And, uh, but I mean, you know, he's just kind of a hot rod, had him a little MG sports car and he gunning around here in Southern California and, you know, he was... Boy, he was living his dream. He, he, is, he is working for a, a company that uh, flew back in, these, in those days before there was electronic banking. Uh, banks would charter light airplanes that would fly, cancel checks back to and fro and do um, paper banking before it became electronic. And I've known several guys that, that broke in and build time and they, they, they flew checks and it's always in the middle of the night <laughs> and all that kind of thing. And uh, I won't go into all the story, but there was real confusion that day Dale was in the right seat. And his instructor and very, very close friend was in this little makeshift jump seat between the two seats. And some guy that the man that owned the company uh, wanted this guy to fly the trip. And he was kind of a belligerent sort of a fellow. And they were, they were already out on the end of the, in the run-up area and did all the pre-flight checks and had run the, run the engines up. And his close friend and instructor, which was right, right there in that center seat, he said, Dale, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting in the right seat. So Dale got out of the right seat and got in that makeshift seat there in between the two of them. And this guy was just, just really erratic in the airplane for some reason or other. And it seemed like maybe he hadn't flown in a long time or something, whatever it was, because it turned out to be nothing wrong with the airplane. They took off. Just, I mean, moments after the takeoff, and this guy, for some reason or other, I don't know, he just froze at the controls or something. He messed around with this thing with the, with, with the engines putting out full power. I mean, they proved it. And he just dove the thing in, into a cemetery and hit the top of this memorial mausoleum of all things a tribute to fallen aviators. 
completely destroyed that airplane. I mean, there, it completely destroyed it and killed all three of them. And Dale immediately came out of his body. And he didn't know he was dead. And he said those checks were just floating down every place. Those just paper just all just thousands, thousands of those, those canceled checks. So he reached up to get one of them and he couldn't hold it. It just, just went through him. Can you see my point? Yes, sir. He didn't know he's dead. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Until he saw himself laying there in that wreck piled up in there, all broken up. Man, I wish I had time tonight to go into all, all that whole, whole story. In fact, I talked to him on the telephone just a couple of weeks ago. And man, I'm telling you, we just, we just had a, he, he came out with a new book on, on this thing and I got hold of it and read it and it fired me up again and so I called him and we, we just had a great reunion again. And um, he, it's amazing all that he went through while they were trying to put his body back together. He'd go back in his body and then he'd die again. And he'd float around that room there where everybody was. And uh, they, they had his body in an in a ambulance, you know, rushing him. They're, in fact, all three of them, rushing him to the hospital or morgue or whatever they had to do. And he said sometimes he's in the ambulance and all, all of a sudden he'd go back in there. Well, see, they'd get a spark of life out of him. He'd go back in his body and then he'd be outside that ambulance following it. <laughs> and he talks about the experience he had in heaven and the wonderful time that he had there. Oh, people. That's our covenant. Yes. Amen. Yes. My boss, when I was co-pilot on uh, Oral Roberts airplane, Bob DeWeese. And uh, Bob had a massive heart attack on a handball court. And he was telling me this was, some, this was a few years after I left ORU. And, and he and Charlotte would, were telling Gloria and me about it. And he said, Kenneth, I have absolutely no remembrance of that heart attack. He said, I, I just remember I was playing handball. And he said, just suddenly I wasn't there anymore. And he said, I was in this gorgeous, most beautiful place I'd ever seen in my life. He said, it was just a small little road, but he said, I noticed on each side of the road, as close as I could tell, the fence on each side of this little road was hand-tooled mahogany. He said, it was fabulous. And he said, it took me a little bit to realize where I was. And he said, Man, he said, all of a sudden, I saw the lights of the city and I recognized where I was. And he said, Kenneth, I never felt such power in my legs. Did you remember the, uh, God said right then in 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, I will walk in them. The spirit of God is not a blob. He's not just right here. Right here's where you contact him. This is, this, 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 is, this is the core right here. This is where your spiritual voice is. This is where the voice of your spirit and his spirit is. But he has legs and arms and eyes. Amen. No wonder he said, lay hands on the sick. Glory to God. If you know the spirit of God, your hands. That anointing and those special anointings to lay hands on the sick. Every believer has it. Yes. Yes. 
They shall lay hands. This is covenant talk. Jesus is covenanting the church against sickness and disease. And he said, in my name, you the believer will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's right. Can you count? Do you know what two plus two is? It's four if the government hadn't changed it. <laughs> well, it's as simple as that. Yes, sir. It's God Almighty covenanting with the church against the devil, against sickness, against disease, against death, glory to God, and against sin and darkness, hallelujah. And we're his covenant arm. We're his hands. And his eyes and his feet. We're anointing carriers. We're infected. <laughs> That's the reason the devil is so terribly frightened that we're going to find out who we are and find out about this covenant and find out what it means to speak supernaturally in other tongues with a supernatural language he just has no way of breaking into. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And it reminds him of what he used to be and what he used to have. That he can't get back. Amen. And you come to that place. Oh, but Brother Copeland, I don't know what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. I might die. Let me help you with that. <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> Your body's going to quit one of these days. Yeah. You should have known that by the time you were four. Yeah. <laughs> and probably did. But oh, there's a plan and a covenant. Yeah. You and I that know Jesus Christ of Nazareth as our covenant blood brother, have we've done all the dying we're ever going to do. All the dying you'll ever do. And this time on this earth, even those of us that live to be 120, oh, come on, this is the shortest time of the whole thing. It's little to nothing compared to eternity compared to the covenant that we have, which is the everlasting covenant. And the blood of the everlasting covenant was shed in your and my behalf. Hallelujah. Bob was explaining that to me in Charlotte there and was talking to glory me. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, I, I began to get heavy. And then suddenly I was back in my body. And Charlotte said, Kenneth. Now this was back during the days of City of Faith. And he was in the emergency room there. And Charlotte's praying in tongues. The doctor's praying in tongues. And they're both shouting the name of Jesus just loud and hard as they can. She said, do you want me to tell you what the first thing he said was? Did he say, Charlotte, Thank you for saving my life. No. He said, Charlotte, what did you do that for? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect 
through sufferings. For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one. This is all covenant talk. This whole book of Hebrews is about the priesthood of the covenant. Jesus after the order of Melchizedek who in honor of that covenant after the slaughter of the king who was actually Shem, came with the bread and the wine and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Yes, sir. Yes. He's in covenant with God, who is the possessor of heaven and earth. What do you have with him? The covenant elements. Whew. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And he invoked the blessing of God. Now, it wasn't the blessing of Abraham yet. It was the blessing of Adam. And then the blessing of Noah of whom Shem is son. Exactly the same blessing that God pronounced on Adam. That's where this blessing of Abraham came from. It's the same blessing, darling, going all the way through the book. Hallelujah. Amen. Adam threw it away and it had to be covenanted back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. Both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all one, for which cause, are you listening? Yes. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Glory. Not disciples. Yeah. Yeah. Brethren. Yes. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took part of, likewise took part of the same. Jesus the man Amen. became flesh. He had to die. He had to have blood. No covenant without blood. No such thing as covenant without blood. That through death he might destroy. Amen. One translation said paralyze. Another one said, bring to nothing, zero, naught. Him that had the power of death, that is the devil. He had it, he lost it. Now here it is. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. All Satan has left is the threat.
But if he, if he can get it to work, then your covenant is not producing for you. Now, it will if death comes. But by being afraid of it, and if you're, if you're a stranger to the covenants of promise, then you've been raised to be afraid of it. You don't have any reason not to be afraid of it. Amen. 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 And you're subject to bondage. Mm -hmm. Because a person who does not put God's word first place and final authority and follows only what they feel and what they see and what they hear and what they smell and what they taste. Then Satan has access to your innermost counsel. And you have no knowledge of the victory and the authority that you have over him. Hallelujah. Relegating everything to heaven. Well, when I get 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 to heaven. You could be living in days of heaven on earth. I didn't say you're not going to get tried. I didn't say that you're not going to get the opportunity because <laughs> you are. Yes, sir. That's the devil's job and he does it. Yes, That's what he does. Yes, and you don't have to put up with it. Yes, and the more covenant-minded you become, the more dangerous you become yes, because you get God inside-minded. You get God in me now, minded. Well, that's the way you think all along. And it's the same God, Elohim himself. The spirit of Elohim moving on the face of the deep. And Elohim said, Light be. And light was. And at the end of 24 hours, Sixteen billion miles of universe. Sixteen billion, something like ninety million seven hundred miles of universe. Just because he said so. <laughs> And you're in serious covenant with him. Everything he has is yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now go with me over to the book of John. Oh, glory, glory, glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The 16th chapter. Now remember, all of this Fifteen, sixteen, seven, well, actually fourteen. Goes all the way back 
the 13th chapter. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen was the covenant supper. Amen. Amen. Now in this sixteenth chapter, oh, the thirteenth verse, this describes our blood covenant relationship with the Most High God. And I, you remember we talked about this in the 17th chapter when God made the first human blood covenant through circumcision. Now he'd already made covenant with Abram in the blood of animals in the 15th chapter. But in the 17th chapter, circumcision was introduced and the name change ceremony took place and he changed his name from Abram to Abraham. We, we talked about that last night. Now, <laughs> this, everything God has now belonged to Abraham. God himself comes down and said, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But I didn't want to do it till after I talked to you. He couldn't. God created the heavens and earth and gave it to men and men gave it to the devil. That's the reason Jesus said, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. He can't just come in here and start binding and loosing. His covenant partners have authority here. Yes. Yes. Now, when we enter into a relationship with him and we say, sir, uh, sure would like, I sure appreciate you getting involved in this. He's, I thought you'd never ask. Uh, <laughs> amen. amen. But we have his name. Yes. We've been named after him. Yes. Glory to God. Glory. This is such and so graphic a picture of that. The first covenant act. Now all of this is being done in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John under the auspices of the Abrahamic covenant. That's the reason he said, I have come to the house of Israel. Jesus ministered as a prophet under that covenant call himself a prophet. A prophet has no honor in his own hometown. Verse 13. How be it when he, let me make another statement. Jesus was and is the covenant gift of God to the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But he's not the only begotten anymore. He's become the firstborn of many brethren. Because we're joint heirs. The Holy Spirit then Jesus, the gift to the world, the Holy Spirit of God is the gift to the church. Hallelujah. 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 The covenant of himself. I was engaged in uh, a time of prayer a number of years ago. And uh, I was 
asking the Lord for, for more power and, and, and more power to be manifest in the prayer line and so forth. I'm, and I was just getting started. And, and I, I just kept praying that, oh, God, oh, God, send us, send us, send us more power. And I, and I heard other people pray that. You know, send the power just now and sing songs like that. And, uh, you know, oh, God, send us more power. And he interrupted me one day. He bad all that he wanted to hear. He said, where am I going to go to get it? <laughs> and he wasn't all that nice about it. <laughs> and I said, sir, where am I going to go to get it, Kenneth? He said, I'm the top. I'm going to say, Kenneth needs more power. And then he startled me. He said, I could have filled you with an angel. I said, uh, he said, now, what is a demon-possessed man? I saw it. He said, but Kenneth, I didn't trust you to an angel. I didn't trust you to anybody but myself. All the power you can get is on the inside of you, boy. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Boy, that, I never said that again from that day. Of course not. Amen. And the more covenant-minded you become, the stronger that sense of power becomes because you're baptized in it and with it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> How be it when he, the Spirit, of truth, may I put it like this, what is truth? It's covenant. Yeah. The spirit of the covenant is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Now, hold that and just come back to the 14th chapter. This is all one discourse around that table. He said, in the 10th verse, believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. Now, when you sum it up in a synopsis, particularly in the Gospel of John. I only say what I hear my Father say. I only do what I see my Father do. For the Son can do nothing of Himself. Amen. Amen. And because He spoke the words of God. Then God gave him his spirit without measure. Hallelujah. And that same God dwells on the inside. And he's just as ready and willing to do the work today as he was then. He doesn't have changed, not one bit. Go back over there now. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He will do it. He shall glorify me. And here it is right here. He shall receive of my... Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. In fact, don't read. Look at me. He shall 
receive of mine. Now here's Jesus saying, the spirit of El Shaddai, the almighty God, He shall glorify me, he shall receive of mine, and show it unto you. All, don't forget the covenant. All that he has is yours, and all you have is his. that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I, he will take of mine and show it unto you. We have access to everything God knows, everything God is, everything God has. Made, recreated a new creature in his likeness. And we don't live by bread alone, but we live by every word of his covenant that comes out of his mouth. Come on. And he said another thing to me a few years ago that just, it kind of, <laughs> he said, Kenneth. And he's excited when he said it. I just read that scripture. I don't live by bread alone, but by every word. And the word every word just jumped off that page at me. But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, every word. Every word he says, I have the spiritual capacity to feed on it. And when he says, by his stripes, I'm healed, I can feed on that. And listen to what he said. He said, I am almighty God. He said, I could start speaking a word a second and go throughout eternity and never say the same word twice. You know he can. Yes, sir. He invented all words to start with. <laughs> they asked a question on college campuses once. Oh, come on. Do you think God understands radar? You'd be shocked at how many of them said no. You know where they got radar? from the bat. That was the original idea. This thing can't see and it doesn't miss. It's using something else. <laughs> Amen. And he doesn't have it, whatever he's after, whatever bug he's after doesn't have to be sitting still either. He just flies around and that, that's the end of that. <laughs> And, it's, and, and guys really started working with that. And the next thing you know, it, it developed into radar. He's the almighty God. Yes, and he said, I could speak throughout eternity and never say the same word twice. And you have the spiritual capacity to hear and understand all of it. Yes. Not to mental capacity. Yes. Yet, we, we don't have that kind of mental capacity yet. It's coming. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But the spiritual capacity is yes. there. Glory to God. Glory. Have you grown any tonight? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Has your capacity stretched? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. We're bigger on the inside yes. than we are on the outside. Yes. And there comes a time when you, 
<coughs> when you got to stretch yeah. and yeah. get out of that rut. <laughs> that little rabbit run, you know, <laughs> that you live 99% of your life in. And get out there where you got to stretch to even comprehend what he's talking about. And then realize this. I was born to know him. I was born to be like him. And so are you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord praise and thanksgiving. Give him praise. Give him honor and glorify his name. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. Give him glory, glory, glory. Give him glory, glory, glory. I'll close it with this. The 30th chapter of Deuteronomy. Oh, I love it. I call heaven and earth to record against you today that I have set before you blessing and cursing. Therefore, life and death and blessing and cursing. Therefore, you choose life. Choose life. I've already made my choice. I've chosen you. I love you. And I'm delivering you from death and cursing. Why did there have to be a law? Why did there have to be a first covenant? Why did there have to be a second covenant? Why didn't God kill Cain for killing Adam? I mean, killing Abel. I mean, after all, that should have been capital punishment. It was not against the law. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. He didn't have a moral right to do that. Right. Adam didn't have a moral right to commit high treason. But there wasn't any law against it. The only law from that day forward was covenant law. When two entered covenant, then there were promises made. Now, it's against the law between you and me to break that promise. That's right. So now certain things are not lawful for my family and your family. Might be all right. Somebody else, they're not in covenant with you. That's right. But there's a law between us. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's good. Huh? Yes, sir. That, 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 that's where the, that was the first law. Yes. But it, then it had to be put into record. This is just as much a manifestation of the Almighty God and His Son Jesus in the earth. This book. Because this is record of the covenant. And now, for another angel to do what the devil did, all he has to do is think about it. Wham! Send his saddle home, brother. He's done. That's right. Amen. It's against the law. Yes, sir. Amen. I said it's against the law. It's against the law for the devil to do anything to you. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. He's a lawbreaker. He's a liar and a chief and a thief. He's first of all a thief. He's not a killer first. Don't misquote Jesus. Jesus said the thief comes but for to steal, kill, and destroy. What is he after? The word. Jesus said the sower sows the word. Satan comes after it. 
Now, if he can steal that, then he can kill you. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing yeah. by the words yeah. of the covenant. Yeah. And the more of the covenant you know, and the more you realize how powerfully God is obligated to what he said, the stronger your faith becomes. And the more you hear the reading of the will. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nancy, I hadn't figured out how to stop this. So, uh, mm -hmm. I declare by the authority invested in me as a, as a prophet, of the Most High God, a prophet of El Shaddai, a prophet of Jehovah Rapha, a prophet and a teacher. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare you well. I declare you debt free. Jesus preached supernatural debt cancellation. That's the acceptable year of the Lord. But here again, Western-minded people just, just kind of blob through that and don't have a clue even what the acceptable year of the Lord was. It's the great jubilee. Well, that was every 50 years. Not anymore. Not anymore. Jesus was saying to them, blind man, you don't have to be blind anymore. I'm here. I am the Jubilee. Amen. I'm your covenant come to pass. I'm here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. To now, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah! Woo! -wee. Glory be to God. Poor man, you don't have to be poor anymore. I'm here, said Jesus. I'm here. I'm your jubilee. I'm here. I'm here. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give him praise and glorify his name. Hallelujah. Sick man, you don't have to be sick anymore. I am the answer to all your prayers. I am your covenant come to life. I declare you well. I declare your eyes well tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I finally, I finally bit the bullet. I mean, after years of loud airplanes and guns and a lot of stupidity on my part, and even back in the early days of my flying, even when you wore a headset, they weren't any good. And they just helped you hear a little better. They didn't protect your hearing at all. So I finally bit bit the bullet and got these hearing aids. But I didn't just stick the hearing aids in my ear. I called my ears well. What was funny, oh man, <laughs> the first time I preached in these things and uh, they, and you know, and normally, David has my little Bible bag that, and here it's back in the office, but no, no, he has it right here. And my phone is right there in that one of the pockets. 
While I'm preaching in the Navajo Indian Reservation, we've had presence out there for oh, a long time, and uh, right at 50 years. Jerry Savelle and, and I. And Wamble uh, <laughs> that's my name. A good eagle speaks. But anyway, I'm, I'm preaching. And I'm preaching on God, a covenant, and a contradiction. Right in the middle of my message, the telephone rang in my ear. <laughs> Nobody could hear it but me. <laughs> <laughs> I got so tired. I couldn't even know where I could cut the thing off. Oh, this is the first time I ever wore these things, you know, in public. <laughs> and the phone just going in my ear, and nobody knows it. And I'm just, I'm saying, ah, <laughs> they, they don't know what I'm laughing at. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I learned right then, I call my ears well. I call my ears well. I call my ears well, I tell you. And anybody in this place that has trouble with your hearing, I call your ears well tonight. Glory to God. Good man and more than just an acquaintance. Uh, Gary Wood. He's in heaven tonight. He was killed in a car wreck when he was just a young teenager. And a friend of his that had gone to heaven a short time before him showed him through heaven. And um, they came to this room full Every kind of body part you could name, full. And he said it was just huge. And he said, what is this? He said, it's the parts room. <laughs> and he said, the father has these. Now listen, listen, covenant partner. He said, the father has these if his people would just call for them. Praise God. Glory. Praise God. Glory. Isn't that amazing? Yes, sir. Now, a very close friend of mine, I mentioned him, Dr. David Oyedipo, pastor of the largest church on earth. And... Uh, the last time I preached there, I preached at um, a minister's conference where we had, in and out of there, we had roughly oh, 7,500 to 8,000 people. And, um, but I preached two out of the five services that Sunday. And in each service, I preached to 50,000 people on the inside. And 50, what was it, 50, 54,000 outside? intense with huge TV screens. So 50,000, 104,000, a service. That means 208,000 people in two services, face to face with. Well, he called me a few years ago. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to Dallas to see uh, my daughter and her husband. And I want to come by and see you. So he landed there at our airport. And, and, and he had a young man. Now, can you imagine how much staff it takes they are not sloppy when it comes to the way they do business. And the year before, right after 
the meeting we had there, we had such an outpouring that there was over 130,000 more people came into that church. And he said the staff was working night and day. And this young man whom I met the following year, he was on staff. Now, sometime earlier, a gunshot, by a gunshot wound, his, his elbow had been destroyed and they put in an elbow joint the way you would put in a knee joint. And he said he'd had pain with that thing ever since it'd been in there. It just wasn't right, and it just excruciating pain all the time, all the time. And the harder he worked, the tighter he got, the, it hurt him. He couldn't hardly sleep. And he said, uh, the Lord said to him, you get some rest. You've been working for me. Tonight I'm going to work for you. He woke up the next morning, and here is that elbow joint lying in the bed next to him <laughs> with a brand new elbow. <laughs> the great physician. Amen. Amen. He brought that thing and showed me a picture of it. Well, well a picture, he, he brought it and showed it to me. And then the following year, I met the young man. I mean, it had, it had the serial numbers on the thing and um, the whole. Yeah. That's our God. And that's what Dr. Wood was telling you. The parts room. The parts room. I declare your joints well. Any painful joint you have right now, I call it well. I call it well. Say it. I call my joints well. I call my body pain free. My God is my physician. He's my father. Healing for my body belongs to me. Who is God? He's who he says he is. God is who he says he is. I serve the almighty God. He's my God. My faith is in him. My life is in his hand. The healing for my physical body belongs to me. I have a covenant with Jehovah Rapha. I have Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord that heals me. If he's going to heal anybody, he'd heal me. If he healed me, he'll heal anybody. Give him praise. person in the sound of my voice that's never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Anyone in here that, that right now you've just, maybe you came with somebody tonight and, and you've never heard anything like this before. Maybe you have, but you've just never acted on it. Maybe you've never evoked the name of Jesus. That means to call on his name. To evoke his name. Invoke that name. It's above every name. To invoke that covenant, praise God. Yes. Set it into motion. It's there, but it'll just lie there doing nothing because God has already activated it from his side. He's already healed you. He's already prospered you. He's already called you healed. He's already called you prosperous. He's already called you saved. He's already called you filled with the Spirit. He's already called you speaking in other tongues. He called you and knew you by your name before the foundation of the world. But you had to agree with him and activate it and invoke that name to invoke the articles of the covenant and they come alive. Amen. That's right, amen. amen. Praise Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone at all 
It would say, Brother Copeland, tonight's my night. I'm accepting him as Lord and Savior. Anyone in the room? Anyone watching online, listen to me. If you believe that God, the almighty God, raised Jesus from the dead, and are willing to confess with your mouth that he is Lord. Thou shalt be saved. Now, it's really too, too bad that all we speak is English. Because that Greek word save. Oh my. David, hand me my phone there for just a second. And take it off of airplane mode. If my phone rings, I don't have to answer it. <laughs> Put it on airplane mode, it won't ring in my ear. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I'm going to go over here and go right here. And I'll go there and there and there and there. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, or Jesus is Lord, and shall believe, listen to me now, and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Strong's G, 4982. Sozo. Sozo. Now that's the word saved. Yeah. To save, keep safe, sound, Genesis to rescue. Wait a minute. Brother Hagin started preaching in the middle of that. And now you know where I spend my time, right? See, I don't have to study all that hard. I just listen to him. I come preaching to you. And then... <laughs> okay, let me go back here. Uh... All right, here we go. To save, to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, from injury or peril, to save a suffering one from perishing, one suffering from disease, to make well, heal, restore to health. It's all the same package, my brother and sister. But an English-speaking congregation, not the congregation, it's the preachers. Yeah. Well, we just preach salvation. We don't preach healing. Yeah, you did. You just didn't know it. You just didn't know it. 
when one little app could have turned it around for you. <laughs> and to preserve one who is in danger of destruction to save or to rescue. Glory to God. That's our covenant. Just one covenant word. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and confess him as Lord with your mouth and thou shalt be saved and healed and delivered and made sound from destructions of evil because it's a covenant. Get on your feet and begin to give God the praise and the honor. And in behalf of those online, let's all of us lift our hands before God and we're going to lead them to the throne of grace. Oh God in heaven, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, According to that word, that promise, I believe with all my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess you right now, Jesus, as my Lord. Take my life and do something with it. I give you my life in exchange for your life. I enter into this eternal covenant with you tonight. This everlasting covenant through your everlasting blood that was shed for me. I take it I receive it. I have it. And I thank you for it. And I forgive if I have ought against any. Thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm saved. And now that I'm saved, now that I'm born again, fill me. To overflowing with your mighty Holy Spirit. I receive him now. And I fully expect to speak with other tongues just like they did on the day of Pentecost. It's a gift and it's mine. For cause the Spirit of God is in me now. I receive him by faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to say to you, get up here where I can see you. Thank you for coming and helping me with this. For being a part of this. My, my. A man that can't preach in this house just can't preach. I mean, just, you know, to go do something else. <laughs> I love you. And God loves you. And Jesus is.